Welcome to the After Talk Show, where we talk about all your favorite movie hits, what we thought about them, and what we think you should watch in the cinema. I'm joined here today with my friend and good buddy here, Rick Grab. Yeah. How are you doing today? I'm doing very good, actually. Uh, are you excited to do this movie review? Yeah, it's, I'm so excited for it. I'm so excited for it. We just came back from watching The Jungle Book, and now we're gonna do our spoiler review. So just for you to note, do not watch this any further if you do not want to be spoiled. <laughs> first impressions. Uh, first impression of the movie. I feel the movie is very, very entertaining. It has, it drives a lot of emotions in you. It mm -hmm. caters to a lot of different age group because it has a lot of different values to the movie as well. It brings you in a, in a journey of this kid. There are themes in this movie that appeals a lot to this younger generation of today so uh, we'll talk about that more as we go through our different points today yes uh, let's talk about the kids acting his name is uh, Neil Seti and he's 12 years old I was very very impressed by this kids acting was uh, because uh, this is first of all his biggest premiere and him uh, acting with a lot of different types of uh, actors like uh, Scarlett Johansson name them mm. Idris Elba, Ben Kingsley, Scarlett Johansson, we had Christopher Walken in there, we had uh, what's her name from uh, Star Wars, forgot. Uh, what, what impressed me the most out of this kid acting is because one, he's acting with obviously human beings but then they all, they obviously had a lot of stickers on because of, one had to be uh, the bear, one had to be the Black Panther, one had to be the tiger as well and him just being the only uh, human role in this was very impressive especially with his emotions as well he was very genuine he, he was very athletic mm -hmm. did a lot of stunts I assume he did a lot of the stunts on his own the only human character figure in this movie is Mowgli yeah. the only one you have to worry about exactly. so. and yeah it plays a lot of importance because people are going to be focusing a lot on him just because he's the only human being mm. in, the, in the whole movie We're good job Neil yeah. Good job, Neil. I'm pretty sure it's gonna go go a lot of places after this movie. Yeah. Next is let's talk about how the movie wasn't too unpredictable, where you sort of like have a flow towards the movie. You understand what's happening, and then there wasn't a scene. There wasn't a lot of scene where you're like, oh, something is going on, but then you don't know what's happening. Very unpredictable. It wasn't like that as much. Do you want to expand on that? What do you think about that? Though? Um. Well, it kept very well rooted to the original uh, cartoon that was back in the if I'm not mistaken in the 70s and even especially some of the cinematography shots that they used were almost exact replicas of the original cartoon yes. which I which I noticed and I really yeah especially really the parts the when uh, the kid is when he was Walking with his hands, yeah, he his, his, his hands, his gestures, yes. and the way he was swinging on the tree branches. Sometimes, if if you go watch it, you you should look out for those. Let's name some of the scenes in this movie that mm. came to us that surprised us. The most that surprised me was the character of Shere Khan, mm. the tiger himself. Like uh, very unpredictable when Shere Khan is around was when he goes up to to attack. We we think that he's gonna attack the wolf, but then he doesn't attack. He just comes down and just chill out and have a conversation mm. and then when we think that okay I guess it's all calm then mm. like suddenly he just attacks the wolf and kills Akira, kills Akira. straight just away throws so, him off yeah, so the cliff and that's I it think, I think that's that's why whenever like Shea Khan is around we just don't know what's gonna happen because mm. he's very he's the only character I feel is very very unpredictable compared to the, the rest it was very well established how you know, it's just one tiger in the whole jungle who just has this control. Yes, over. power um, over all the other animals. Yeah. Surprisingly, they didn't. They also didn't have almost every animal talk in this movie. Mm -hmm. They didn't have the elephants talk. They yes. didn't have the vultures that you remember in the original uh, cartoon aren't there. But they did have quite a few minor caliphate animals to come there and add to the joke, like when when Mowgli was. 
the first time Mowgli was trying to get the big high the supply of honey for mm -hmm. Baloo. Yeah, yeah. And exactly. they just popped up asking, Oh, what's going on? Oh, it's a uh, it's, it's a cub, yeah. no, it's a man cub. Oh, it's a yeah. Man cub. Yeah, everyone it's thinks it's like a monkey or something. And then <laughs> monkey. It's not a monkey. Oh, it's a man cub. It's a man cub. Like and then another animal comes in and asks the same question. Ask the same question and Baloo yeah, is like everyone gets calmed down. <laughs> you know, you are you are this close to becoming an endangered species right <laughs> yeah. now. <laughs> that was such a funny like scene. At the end you had Mowgli rile up the other animals of the jungle to go against Shere Khan which mm -hmm. never happened before in the original series which which led up to the theme where, whereby uh, Bagheera stated how Mowgli is not just a man but the first the first creature to bring all the jungle animals united together, yeah. Yeah, together as one Mowgli ran with the fire and then he fires up the whole jungle and then, that was by accident though it wasn't yeah by accident and then uh, Shay Khan says that like, well, I guess you have became a man now. You have burnt the entire jungle and mm. tried to make the animals go against, go against Mowgli himself. Mowgli. Yes, yes, so yes. we we, we we had like a small like feeling that oh maybe the whole how how is Mowgli going to handle the situation when everyone's going against him? Even his small wolves as well, the small uh, cubs, mm. wolf cubs, they were like oh like I'm scared of Mowgli right now because he fired up the whole jungle. But eventually he just throws the fire into the river. And says that his he belongs he belongs to the jungle, to the jungle which is home. Or even the fact like how King Louis seemed very menacing and frightening in, yeah. in the seas when he was chasing Mowgli. Yes, that was made King Louis a bit more fierce, a yes. more fearsome character rather Especially than just a funny yeah. comedy relief. Especially when the beginning part, and then we thought like, wow, like. King Louis is someone who is like very dangerous and then like a guitar mm. string starts playing in the back <laughs> and then like we just thought like oh this, this guy's just a joke and then eventually it brought in his like fierce fierce, yeah, yeah. fierce moment when he starts shouting when he screams and then he yeah, chases exactly. for a kid this movie we felt that there was a lot of values in this movie For example like values they have like about loyalty of how even though uh, Mowgli belongs to the human being but then he eventually still stays loyal in the jungle itself. He doesn't go back to the human. He stays in the jungle. That's how loyal he is. So there's more bond between Mowgli and the animals rather than Mowgli and the humans. Yeah. Because I guess they wanted to establish that the jungle should remain as Mowgli's real home rather than ending the movie at, like the original cartoon where he ended up just going to the man village because exactly. he gets drawn by the attention of the little girl which they don't have in this movie yeah. which is good so they just want to est establish this whole this whole premise that Mowgli belongs in the jungle let him let the boy stay in the exactly. jungle and just be a man in the jungle like yeah. how Baloo told him yeah exactly don't try and be a man in the man village you can just be a man, man. There. I remember one part when Shere Khan he was climbing to the top of the tree to kill uh, the kid himself. Talks about how he killed the kid's actual dad and also the wolf, which is yes. yeah, his other dad. Yeah, that's, that a, that's a good point. He killed yeah. both his dads. Yeah, both his, his dads. I mean, his real dad and also mm -hmm. Akila, which is the wolf dad. So, yeah. and when he was saying that he killed the actual dad, Mowgli did not like turn around to look at him in anger. But when he talked about Akila, which is wolf dad, because he had a lot more attachment towards Akila because yes, he was growing yes, up, yes, yes. growing up with Akila. So when he talked about Akila, he just turned around with this fierce face and was going at it. And also, there's another one part where we talk the value of uh, you just being yourself as how you are. It's 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 perfect for the whole world. It's enough. Like the scene where Bagheera stops Mowgli from following the wolf pack to attack Shere Khan. Yes. He stops him and told him, "Don't fight." Mm him like a wolf because you know a wolf find him like exactly. a man just be who you are and just use what you have your own gifts mm -hmm. to fight your own enemies exactly this Mowgli did a lot more uh, MacGyver stuff mm. <laughs> making his own tools, making his rather tools. Than, than the original cartoon which was pretty good I like the element of yeah Mowgli. they had a lot of element where this kid is they portrayed this kid as a very very curious kid actually makes a lot of sense to, to this movie like you, you expect the kid to not just be so animalistic but mm -hmm. because he's human because he's human reason yes, and exactly, innovate and exactly. do things uh, next is let's talk about how we felt about the movie as a whole first of all it has a lot of comedy not a lot of comedy but a good a good part of it yeah a good fair amount of, of mm -hmm. comedy and then they have action where the animals are fighting with each other especially mm -hmm. when uh, action is good Bagheera was like 
hunting for Shere Khan from the no, back. No, no, he was not hunting. He was chasing after. I mean, after. he was yeah, he was chasing after. <laughs> yeah, after uh, hunting. <laughs> he was chasing after Shere Khan. Like it, it actually looked like a proper National Geographic like scene. Yeah, that whole scene, the, yeah, the way was, they moved, the animation so was so good. It was so perfect. It fact. had it had a bit of everything in the movie that. Uh, perfectly fitted every single part of it mm-hmm. and made us feel like it's a proper complete movie and when we finished watching it we were like wow really very satisfied with very satisfied with this movie actually i was worried they would overdo with the songs but then i realized they only used two songs one mm-hmm. was bad necessities and king louis song i want to be like you yeah uh, i think it was fairly done just to pay tribute to the original song hit songs from the cartoon and they didn't overdo it it was just um, yeah. the scene with the band necessities was just a song that Mowgli and and Baloo sang together and it was just like one scene it wasn't like a huge music video where yeah, you just like dance random and, animals and start pick, like picked coming out, out picked out the fruits and start juggling them <laughs> or things like that it wasn't it wasn't like that but yeah. i felt that when uh, king louis was singing it did not fit right at that part because they were he was talking about he wanted the the red flower right the red flower yeah right. he, yeah and then and the starting point he starts singing and i'm like yo you want the red flower and like you're supposed to be a lot more aggressive at this part of the movie but then you're just singing out loud with a guitar string at the back and then eventually it transitioned into a more conversation way of singing it to the kid itself. yeah it wasn't too musical yeah because the way they sing it um, came off as a more broadway style whereby they made the song as a com- part of the conversation towards exactly Mowgli, trying yeah. to convince Mowgli why i want to be like you maybe we should work yeah. together negotiating the terms you know you just help me bring the red flower yeah. and we can conquer the jungle together you yeah. know can be best friends and yeah yeah obviously he had his own intentions in this which is like obviously he wanted to conquer the whole jungle by having the red flower yeah i mean no motives yeah. behind what we meant about red flower is literally just fire yeah, it's just fire yeah if you guys don't know what we mean by the red flower let's just give a bit give us uh summarize the movie and like give you a okay. rating about the movie very good an excellent disney live action movie jungle book is a very good live action adaptation of the original cartoon mm-hmm. and I enjoy it thoroughly so I give this a solid 8 out wow. of 10 solid 8 solid 8 that's good I would I would give this movie an 8.5 actually everyone could watch this movie and should watch this movie as well and Agreed. yeah take it from us like we are the best in this we know <laughs> how movies should be uh well, we think we life. do If you think if you think otherwise, can put it, always put it in the comments below. Yeah, exactly. We're just making this video because we like to share our thoughts with you. Yeah. Please share your thoughts with us in the comments below. And if you like this video, like it, subscribe to us, whatever. And you can follow us also on our social media. Uh, Rickraft RR on my Instagram. Add me on Facebook, Rickraft as well. Uh, don't follow me on Twitter because I don't have Twitter. It doesn't have. I have Twitter and Instagram, so you can follow me under DJY the Artist. Links below, and we'll see you guys next time. One love, one love, one love.